Okay, we all in. Uh, you've sent that message, yeah? Okay. All right. We'll wait for the guy making coffee. Don't, don't rush. Don't rush. Don't relax. Take it easy. <laughs> okay. As I said, we've spoken about the LTE devices. You've got your connectivity to your site now that you've configured all of those things. We're going to start talking about what we're going to connect to the end of it. Okay. Uh, we're going to start off with this product. The iServe Deck solution. This is a new one that we've now brought out. It's a single cell solution with three handsets. These handsets here. It's not in our mouth, no? no, it's not in the mouth, sorry. Uh, as I said, it's a new product, so we haven't actually catered anything on it as yet. Okay, has anyone configured any of the iServe Deck stuff? Your lab. Is it working? What, the ice? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I've been told something different, but anyway. <laughs> we'll come back to that. Okay. This is a single cell solution. For the guys that have configured them before, we get the normal ISO bases. You'll remember it. It's a little rectangular device. Little red, um, little light on it that either flicks red, green, depending on the status of the device. Yeah, it has to be green for it to be working. This is a single cell solution. So the box comes with one base station, three handsets in them. Y'all can pass this around to have a look at it. Yes, the 8430s. Yeah, this is the 8430s. The current handsets that we got, the ruggedized handsets, the 8630s and the 8430s. I think. Yeah, they're all they're all compatible with the, the base station. However, we sell the solution with these handsets. Okay. It's as I said, it's a bundle. Three handsets with a single cell um, single cell um, base station. Okay, now as I said, for the guys that have configured this con uh, the full uh, deck solution. The configuration, very similar, simple and easy. We'll run through one now. If it's going to come with your cloud-based solution, it will be pre-configured. Dylan is our ISO specialist on the configuration at the moment. So Dylan, thank you for that. Okay, so Dylan will pre-configure them. And as I said earlier, you're welcome to drive here. He takes a beating quite well. <laughs> okay, for... The demonstration of setting this up today, we are going to connect it to an ONSA, ONSA site PABX. No, we get, uh, no for oh. today's purposes, we're going to connect it to our 7070 that's on the board there. We're going to show you how quick, easy, and simple this thing works. The single cell takes two repeaters on it. Remember, you cannot exceed no, two. Is it three repeaters? Sorry, it takes three repeaters on it. Okay, you cannot exceed that. You cannot put another base station on. It will take up to 20 handsets as well. Can't add another base station. Can't add another base station. Okay. Okay. Uh, no. I got proof. We can rewind it. <laughs> okay, but anyway, uh, so you can connect extenders onto it and 20 handsets. We can add up to 20 handsets. Yes, it comes with three in the box. We can expand. The extenders, yes. Yeah, three. Three. Yeah, sorry, three repeaters. Just need power, okay? Right. No, I'm getting to that now. Okay, the device does, the base station does not work on PoE. So you have to plug power into it, LAN cable into your switch, and we're up and running. That's as easy as the installation gets. All right? Yes? No, repeater can't repeat. To base station, yes. Okay. Um, oh, yes. Five concurrent calls. Okay? 
Yes, we can go 20 handsets, but five concurrent calls only. Yes, because remember it has to go through the base. Okay. okay. Also, um, if you guys have done the standard ISERV decks, you'll know that if we go for G729, you have to add a module onto them. This one's got it built in. G729 is built in on it. Okay. Limits your cost as well on that. I'm going to plug this in now, and for the guys that have configured it, you're going to see it's exactly the same. One or two minor changes in the programming. Six silicon head ports. Five. Single silicon. Oh, okay. Sorry. Six. Yeah, but it's narrow band is five. But once you go on the repeater. Yeah, it's only five. Only five. Mm. So your repeater, three. Yes. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to plug this in and show you all. Okay, insulation, as I said, straightforward. You're going to plug into power. You get one power lead that comes with it, so you're going to plug it into power on the back. One RJ45 input there. Plug that in. I've luckily got a little hole here to just hang that up for now. This is not how you'll do it on site. I'm just improvising here, please. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> no, blocking the fan on the 7070 is a bad idea, guys. I'm just going to leave it like that. If it's solid green, it's got a Yes. Okay. Green light is on. We're in the right direction already. It means it's got a IP address from the DHCP server. On default, it's set on DHCP. We're going to log into it now. We'll show you if you need to change it to uh, static, how to do that, and those type of things. Right. We've plugged it in. We've got our green light. We need to know what the IP is on that. Anyone have any ideas on it? Now, okay, remember, sorry, the Alan's question is, the Alan said the device is running on the HTTP. So what is the oh. HTTP range that we've got? Why don't you want to extend one? Extend to 50. Okay, so it's got an address somewhere in there. Yeah. Okay, are we agreed on that? Go to the links on the router. Go to the links on the router. Yeah, we can go to the lease on the router and things like that. But I'm saying we're connecting this equipment. We're only working with this equipment now. So how do we get the IP address? Any ideas? How do you get it? Exactly. Menu, star 47, star. Is that an answer? Yeah. And then it comes up with searching. So the 47 represents... Sorry, guys. So menu, star, IP, star. Because 47 is yeah. IP. So it's menu, star, IP, star. Okay, and when you punch in <coughs> the star 47 star, there is no acknowledgement on the handset. Just press it, and when you hit your last star, it will come up with searching on the screen. So do not get concerned when you are pushing buttons and nothing is happening. We had a tech that we freaked out with because of that. He kept on telling us, nothing is happening. He said, no, just keep quiet. Press the buttons we're telling you to press, please. Right. Okay. It's come up there, it shows me the MAC address and the IP address. In this case, 192.168.1.17. It's not the IP address, the handsets, the IP address. It's the IP of the base, yes. Only the base will have an IP address, the handsets don't. And the MAC would be the MAC of the base, and it would respond. No, the MAC of the base. Tells me the MAC of the base. Okay. Okay, so, as you can see, We have gone to the web page, which is 192.168.1.17. And that's what it comes up with, the main page. The home page, status page. Okay. So, what do we want to do first? Do we want to change the IP to a static? Yes or no? Why? 
Okay. We prefer to put it on a static. Yes, we do. So, what do we do to get there? We go to network, firstly. Okay. As you can see, easy enough. DHCP static. We want it on static. It then says, what IP address do you want? What do you think we should put there? Sorry? Below or above, not in our DHCP range. No, no, no. 51. <laughs> okay. Is our default gateway correct? Yep. Yes, it is. Okay. Anything else you guys think we need to change there? Yes. Someone said yes? No. Do we need the DNS? No. Yeah. <laughs> Why did you all say no? We're not breaking out anywhere or anything. It's all local communications. So even if it's hosted or local, we don't do a DNS. Okay. That's all we need there. So we're going to save and reboot. It rebooted. Did it reboot already? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry? Yes. Somewhere. Yes. We'll run through the somewhere. Okay. Okay, so it is restarting. Okay. It's restarting, but remember now it comes up with that page there. It says home. So if we push home, are we gonna get to our device? Huh? You need to change your IP. Yes, we changed our IP to fifty one. That's still trying to reconnect to seventeen now. So it's not going to reconnect. So let's go to 51. Okay. Username and password, guys. Default, admin, admin. No, it's not saying it's APN. <laughs> okay, so now we've got, we've got it set on our network. What do we need to do now? There's two more important things we need to do. Any ideas? We need to go add extensions. What you first need to do is check the firmware status on the latest that you've got. Before you do that, because otherwise that's what you need to do. Okay. The firmware is on the latest. In this case, we first we do the firmware last. Yeah. Okay. okay. Sorry? Uh, the priority for the codex comes in when we set up the server. I would say set up the server first would be the best thing to do. So, do we know where the server is in this case? The PABX. And the IP address on the PABX is 192.168.1.10. Okay, so our registrar address will be our PABX. That server alias, you can call it whatever you want. It's a name. Okay. Uh, outbound proxy. Any ideas, guys? Oh, sorry. The net. We disable the net. Okay. Right, sorry. Outbound proxy. Any ideas? No. Outbound proxy. Easiest is the PABX IP. Okay, so the IP solution we sell mainly on the hosted solution. Okay. Not when there's a PABX involved. So today's setup, we're doing it on the PABX. But with the hosted solution, the registrar address will be the client's name. So we have pre-configured a, a bunch of domain names on the hosted PABX. So for example, abcshoes.sem.com. 
Now, if you uh, work on the ACM before, you'll know what I'm talking about with the domain name. The outbound proxy in the host distribution will be the PFS's <coughs> public IP address. I'm going to say 192.1972342323 and the PFS IP address. We've got uh, multiple PFS's out in the cloud that we use for setups. Mm -hmm. um, we've got about seven that we, that we use. So it can be any one of those seven IPs which we'll give to you if you need to reconfigure one yourself. So host solution registrar will be a domain name that we'll give to you and the IP address we'll give to you. On the on-site solution, it will just be the IP address of the PFS on the registrar. Okay, sorry. Outbound proxy. We said PBX IP, am I correct? Yeah. Okay. So let's put the PBX IP in, Quinton. Sorry? Uh, outbound proxy, PBX IP. Okay. Do we need to change any of these items here, guys? Anything else on that page? Codec priority. Codec priority. Why? No, but it's got all those codecs available. It starts at the top. But why do we go to G729? Why do we want them to run out on top? Because that's what everything else is using. No, but so the, 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 the bridge, you go down to the rock. <laughs> and it's got a G729 board in it. It has got a G729 board in it, but why do we have to use it? Yes, it's there. So you can pick up that board first. But what's the purpose? What, what, okay, what's the difference between 729 and 711? Bandwidth. Yes. Bandwidth. Bandwidth. So you want to use the smaller bandwidth for us? Yes. Smaller okay. bandwidth first, and then the rest. So, are we leaving the other codex in, or are we only going to run on 729? Sorry? If you connect your PABs, you can leave them in. No, you can leave them in. Yeah, okay. So we're going to leave them in. Okay? Including 726? Okay. I generally remove 726. But we can, okay, we can remove it. <laughs> We prefer 729. Mm. However, you get other ISPs, argument's sake, um, ABC, I don't want to mention names. They prefer 711. Then they, they're sending their call to us on 711. Now, if one, ag uh, one device phones the other device, it's called user agent. So use user agent uh, one, talks to user agent two, then they want to communicate on those, on a different code. So we rather keep them in. Mm. So that it will, Negotiate on the uh, language. Yeah. You learn ALO. Yeah, you learn Okay. Are you guys happy with everything else on that page? Yes. Okay. Okay. You all do understand what the registration time is, eh? So this device, oh, sorry. That device is going to go back to the PABX every five minutes and say, I'm here. I haven't gone anywhere. Don't worry. Are you still there? Yeah, are you still there? Okay. Right, so we're going to save that now. Okay. So now we are connected to the PABX. Is there anything else we need to do? Anything else we need to do? We need to set up the extensions. Okay. So what numbers are we going to use for the extensions? And what details? Yeah, one, two, and three should work. One, two, and three. Yes, I think that would be a better idea. Let's go create some extensions on our PABX. But it's not needed. It's a, it's a cordless phone. 
<laughs> Seriously, we're gonna go there now. Good. <laughs> okay, so we've gone through this, how to log on to the PABX, everything yesterday. You guys should have a good idea on how to do that. We did not cover SIP extensions yesterday uh, or SIP trunks because I said we would cover it today with the equipment we were doing. So, anyone know where we create a SIP extension on the PABX? 840. Hmm? 842. 842 is our IP extensions. 842 is our SIP extensions. So, we're going to go to 842 first. Um, usually we would go check our licensing at this point to make sure we've got SIP extensions available. Yeah, and check the virtual cabinet. But we did check our licensing yesterday when we were busy on the system, so we know we've got SIP extensions available to us. Okay, that is where you find your SIP extensions. It's a third-party phone. We've got 48 of them available to us on the system. Okay. Right, then, 857. Virtual cabinet information. Does everybody understand virtual cabinet information? This is where you tell the system your virtual extensions, your virtual, as you can see, you've got ITP, which is your IP extensions. You've got a hell of a lot of them. Virtual SLIs, there's a few. Virtual DLIs, there's a few. But the one we worried about is this one, substation. That generally is not on your virtual cabinet. I changed one yesterday when we were looking at something. I can't remember what it was. Therefore, it is there. But usually, that shows up as a wired ITP in that block. I changed that yesterday. So take into account, you will have to change that when you are setting up these things. Sorry? Blocks of four. Blocks of four. OK? But to confirm, we go to 8, 842, and as you can see, we converted one block. It's given us four extensions. I only want three. Can we send one back, Quentin? If you choose two blocks, you can have then eight. If you choose two blocks, you'll have eight. Is okay. Sorry? Is the attachment going to change? Is it affect your user? Well, if you go back here, you can see there's a lot of stuff, and only what's open in white blocks you can actually change. So you can't take that block to here. You can only put it in there, okay? So you're gonna have to look at what you've got configured on the system and change accordingly, okay? Yeah, remember if you've got IP extensions and things like that, rather start from the bottom because you configure your IPs from the top. Yeah. <laughs> Same thing I use the SLI for. Forwarding ports and things like that, but other than that, I haven't used it for anything else. Okay. Right, we've got that. We go to 842 again because we need to configure usernames and passwords and things like that. Okay. Guys, do not convert any more than what you need, especially on these third-party SIP devices. You will all have heard about hackings and things like that. This is the easiest way to hack into the system. It's for somebody from the outside to create a SIP extension on your PABX. And I generally move away from the default usernames and passwords because it's default. Everyone knows it. Okay, so I change the passwords, I change the usernames. Extension numbers you can change as, uh, change as required, okay? In this case, we'll just use, I don't like doing this, but just for this purposes, we'll use the extension number as the usernames, okay? So the first username will be 2116. Password. As I said, stay away from the defaults. 
Everyone knows one, two, three, four. <laughs> okay, let's get difficult. Zero, 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 zero. <laughs> we, we, <use laughs> we're using that only for these purposes. Do not use these passwords, please. Okay, so what did we use? Four zeros. Okay. Okay. That's why they install that new plan. Passwords, four zeros in, because we've got a private network. No one can access it from the outside. Okay. We're going to configure all four. Uh, okay, sorry. Very important. If we move across to the right. Use IP whitelist. Do we disable it? You're really looking for your client to get hacked, aren't you? It's going to be on the local network. <laughs> it's going to be on the local network. I'll, oh, still, I'll still enable it. Okay. okay. We'll show you how to do a little bit of a shortcut in the whitelisting table so that you don't have to punch every address in manually. Okay, so we'll leave that enabled. Okay. If you disable this, there is no whitelist checking it'll accept a connection from any IP. We'll leave it enabled and we'll show you in 875 how to enable the IP addresses that's connecting to the system. Okay, so did we connect to, did we configure 2117 and 2118? Okay. 2117 only you connected. Okay. Okay, we save that. Right, let's go to 875. This is our whitelist, the item we were talking about on the end. Okay, phone. Okay, so phone IP whitelist. We know what range we're going to be coming from, right? To do just that cell there, we would whitelist 192.168.1 dot 51, because that's the IP address there, okay? But if you want to whitelist your whole entire range, your internal range, you can put 255 in there and it'll whitelist your entire local range on a slash 24 network, okay? Do you all understand that? So if you're doing IP phones and you're going to have various, you can put 255 and as long as it's on your local LAN, it will connect. If you do not a whitelist, it will actually come up on the phone with an IPP registration error. Okay, so we have now configured our extensions on the system. We have whitelisted it. There should be no issue why this phone shouldn't work. Am I correct? Signed. So you've got to tell that that's part of it. We have to set up the extensions on our ISERV system at this point. In 7.24? No. If our extensions wasn't in 7.24, can we go back to the uh, subphone information? There wouldn't be numbers here. Okay, so if those were blank, you would have had to go to 724 to put them in, or if you wanted to change the extension numbers, same story, you go to 724. Virtual cabinet or virtual card it also adds it, doesn't it? No. No. It doesn't. Generally not, because when your system is initially switched on, it allocates to everything. So unless you've changed something in between? It, there will be nothing 
The numbers that you want, yes. Okay. If you didn't have it open, you wouldn't have to. If you had it open and you made a change, then you'd have to refresh. Okay. Right, so we're going to have to go back to our web interface on the iServe now. Okay. If you stay out too long, that's what happens. Okay, we know our password is admin admin. We're in there now. What do we do? We're going to extensions. Correct. Okay. We've got no extensions at all, as you can see. So the obvious thing would be to add an extension. Anyone want to help us out with this? That's what you said? <laughs> Just two one one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Authentication. Oh, sorry, you were configuring. Then you've got to use the new extension number for authentication. No, remember, we used the extension number is our authentication code. You don't necessarily have to do that. You don't put anything in there. Okay. Is that all we have to do? <laughs> okay. Remember, you can configure more than one server on this thing. But we've only configured one in this case. So it automatically comes in there. All right. Save that. Are we going to configure the other two as well? Anyone want to help us with one of the other ones? Okay. Sorry? The display name. Mm -hmm. You can set it up here. It'll show in there. Yes. You can set up the display name. Okay. He's using the extension number as the display name, but remember, you can put the, the user's name in there, whatever you want. Okay. That will come up on the screen. Once we register, you will see it. You can put 105 under the extension number, but your authentication. Yeah, yeah, that's your user ID. Yeah, your user ID. No, it will work. It will work. Okay, so there's all our three extensions configured now. So now we should be working. Why not? We have to register the handset. So you can register one by one if you want, or you can tick all three and say start registration. Okay. Right, so now the base is saying, I'm ready to register. From your handset, menu button, you've got that little colorful circle there. That's your connectivity. On the single cell, they're a bit different, but that's how you would do it on a normal base. Remember on the single cell, you need to go into the handset. Oh, sorry, yeah. <laughs> okay, that's your extensions. That's how we do it on the normal base station. The actual first time I connected this, I also had a problem with it. We have to go into handsets. Add a handset. Okay. Uh, on, the, on the other one, you got registration and SIP, etc. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's two. It's, it's yeah. yeah. So now you have to go into the extension tab, and you have to actually create handsets. Fs, because no handset is connected as yet. Okay? So now we can click all three and say register handset. Okay, so as I said, menu, 
go to the little colorful um, circle there, it says connectivity, you press OK, and you press OK on register. Access code to register these to the base station is four zeros. Now take into account, yeah, okay. Now take into account, it's not the same four zeros you set up with the SIP extension. It's totally different. Okay. So four zeros, one, two, three, four. And we go, okay. It says registering on the phone. No, it didn't register. What number are you choosing? Ah, it doesn't. It, uh, it allocates from there. No, it won't register just yet, but they entered to say registration zero. Yeah, that's on the page where you can zero. Yeah, okay. I think I just pushed mine incorrectly. It says registering now. Okay, so two of them have come up. Okay, that's the third one up. Okay, so all of them are now registered. To the base? Yeah, to the base. Okay. So now this is talking to that. We need it now to talk to the PABX. Okay. Okay, did you see what he did there now? He went into extensions, clicked it all again, and said starts the registration. Now from the base station, it's now registering the extensions on to the PBX. Uh, searching, okay. I got 2117, so I'm pity. <laughs> what are you? Uh, okay, so I serve is 2116. So if I dial 2116, Okay, ended call. <coughs> 401 unregistered. It's 217, it's up from 217. Did you dial 217? I'm on 2117. Yeah, Johnny, I dialed 2117. I dialed 217. No, you dialed 217. <laughs> it's dead, yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm dialing 2116. So, Johnny dialed 217. Yeah. So, dialed 2117. As you can see, the screen I've got open here is used for troubleshooting. Does not exist anyway. So let's check on our PBX why it does not exist. There is why it doesn't exist. It's a four digit. Oh, yeah, it should actually still have been there. Yeah, it's four digit. We trust troubleshooting at the moment. Troubleshooting. Okay, so it's still not going through. Ah, uh, let me try to phone from there to a base station and see. Now I'm getting an opposite hang up. No, it's not the white listing. Mm. 
Mm-mm. Nope. Nope. Okay. No. Mm. Because it's even showing registered. Mm. Okay, yeah. Yeah, let's go check at uh, 7.20, uh, sorry, 8.42. Yeah, it's registered. Mm. It was a bit too quick. It's rebooting. Okay, it's up again. No. Okay, sorry, we're just rebooting the base to have a look. Can't even form. The stock for the freedom installed. Everything will be pre-configured as you mentioned, but also pre-tested. Okay, so what we do in our office, we set up the LTE routers, connect all the phones, and we are able to make a call via that link. So that when you get the stuff, we know it's plug and play and it's, and it's up to us. Okay. Don't talk about you, folks. <laughs> <laughs> we just had a problem with them the other day, that's all. <laughs> but the stock thing is right. Okay, it's still not registering. Okay. Yeah. Seven. User unknown. Seven. Refresh. <laughs> Refresh the. <laughs> no, it's not even coming through now. Are you making an outside call? It's rebooted. Always. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, I promise it's not this difficult, guys. Waiting for the sub to come up. No, it still hasn't uh, registered on the site. Go have a look at the registration. Yeah, that's it on the base on the same version. Yeah. Okay, this came up now. Pit. What's it saying? Huh? Shouldn't you see the LDI as well? Go back to the Interval too brief. Not that Simon changed from 1800 to 300. Does not exist anywhere. That's the problem we're getting there. Registering to the right address. Okay, yeah. Okay, but I think it's probably something on the PABX because we've yeah. played around with the PABX quite a lot yesterday. But generally, this should have registered 100% and we would have had no problem with it. 
trust me, I set up one on Friday last week. It took me a couple minutes. It was up and running. And that was on an SEMC, which is much more complicated than on a normal office server. Okay. But from a pricing perspective and things like that, these bundle packs are brilliant. And for the guys that have installed it, the range on these things are incredible and they work. I mean, I've got one site here that has got, what is it, 10 IP phones and I think they've got about 25 ISOs working there. It's a massive factory. They make um, appliances, fridges, stoves, chest freezers, that type of thing. And that's quite a harsh environment. And it works perfectly. CLI will pass through. Mm -hmm. So if your for PABX is getting CLI, you'll get the CLI on you. Okay. Any questions on them? No, it comes up on the screen. It becomes one of those two buttons there when you... Yeah. Okay. All your normal functionality is available on these, straight from your PBX. Okay. Any questions? Oh, okay. We're just going to go through the firmware quickly. And yeah, that'll be that on this one. So you, your question is group pickup and that on the hosted solution. On these, these are still an extension on the payback, so it will be configured. Okay. It was never there before. The new firmware doesn't have it. Country. Yeah. Okay. So who? Okay. So I can't remember when Dallin uh, asked who has done the answers before. So, most of you guys. Oh, I thought you were going to drive the mouse. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so, okay. we're going to uh, download the firmware from, from our Meatech website where all the firmware and that is stored. If you. Have you got it on you or not? It's, it's on you. Just open up uh, Explorer. Uh, yeah, right click. File Explorer, at the bottom, File Explorer. On the bottom left, C drive, Windows C. Okay, so in here, we have a file called FWU Path, capital F, capital P. We open that and we have the different models there. Those different models are the different handsets, the different base stations, and the repeater. So we know that the firmware itself is sitting under F is under C drive, FWU path. So you can minimize that for us. On the base station, we go to firmware update. Sorry, uh, just go back to home status. Yeah. No, no, no. Uh, on the base itself, home status. Next to it. Over here is the firmware version, 3.55, uh, what they call branch 25. We're going to update that. Okay, so if you go under extensions, so now the base is 3.55. We go to extensions, we go to handsets. And we'll see the firmware of the handsets, 3.55.25. And the... 8430, that is the model number of the handset. So then you know what mo model that extension is. Okay, so the handset and the base, the firmware always has to match. If it doesn't match, you're going to have problems. So now we can go to uh, firmware update. Your firmware update server address will be the PC that you're going to be doing that's got the firmware on. So in our case, Dylan's going to check what our firm, what our IP address is. Try 99. Should be it, yeah. Okay. 
Do you guys know how to check the IP address on your PC? I'm hoping so. Okay. <laughs> Open up um, CMD so you can press the Windows button and the R key together. Otherwise, open up the start menu and you punch in CMD. You type in ipconfig and it will tell you there what your IP address is. Okay. In our case, it's 1.99. Firmware path, we have capital F, WU, lowercase, capital P, and lowercase ATH. Capital P. Then uh, update base stations. We have required firmware. We put three uh, three eight zero, no, just three eight zero, and we say branch. We leave as is, and we say start and save update. Okay. However, I let the Alan run through this so that you guys can see. We need to set up the PC so that the base can go and fetch the firmware from the, from the PC. Oh, sorry, we need to set up the PC to, to allow it. So we can go to, I have another application on our PC called Pumpkin. <coughs> We're not calling any of you guys Pumpkins. The application is called Pumpkin. Once Pumpkin is open, we can go to Options. The address on top, we just pointed to C drive. And we click OK. And we say, give all, take all files. The two tick boxes there. And we click on OK there. If you have an antivirus on your PC, disable it. Will you? Yeah, I got Left. Yeah, just pause. Uh, bottom one. Uh, four hours is good, yeah. Just go back to pumpkin first. Bottom right corner, server is running. That has to be ticked when the firmware is being done. Once the firmware has been done, untick it. And we're also going to do changes on the, we're going to change this back to zero. Because every time this base tries to look for firmware, it's using resources on the base. And we don't want to use unnecessary resources. So now pumpkin is running, we can upgrade the base. Now we can click on Start, save, update, and we click on OK on the window that pops up. As soon as we click OK and we open up Pumpkin, we'll see, hopefully, if everything is right, we'll see the information coming in there. You're not in Pumpkin, you put it onto here directly. No. no. Because uh, under firmware update, it's already looking at FWU path. And you automatically put the seed down on the yeah. front. Yeah. Just, uh, sorry, Dan. Go to my firewall, my antivirus again. Choose uh, allow all traffic. Uh, there we were, yeah, that one. Yeah. Okay, just yeah, there yeah. we go. Okay, so, so always check your, your firewall, your antivirus. And as you can see, that acknowledgement tab, the numbers are running quite fast. <coughs> so the base station is, is downloading the firmware now from the PC. Okay, once the base station has been done, then we need to do the handsets. The handsets take a bit longer to do. But we'll get to that. So as soon as the base has, has got it, it will reboot. Then we go to the extension. So let's just wait for it to reboot. L have a look at the LED on the base station now. It's going crazy there. Colors will change. Green, red, orange. And after a while, it will come up solid again. Okay. So when the firmware is busy uh, importing into the, um, the device, Try and not do anything yet. You won't have access to it, but just leave it, let it carry on and do its thing. Do not unplug the power or the network or anything on that device while it's doing firmware. Okay, so leave it as is until it's done. It takes a few minutes. Always.
always make sure if you have your handset, wherever one, thank you. When you take your handset, you can dial menu star 47 star to find your IP. But once it finds the IP address of the base, you can select that particular device and it will tell you what is the firmware of the base as well as the firmware on the handset. And you can scroll down and, and you can have a look. Also, when you do menu star IP, menu star IP star, so 47 star, it will tell you, it will give you the DB readings between the handset and the base. Okay. So if a client says they're walking to this corner, speech quality starts deteriorating, then you know that's a dead spot there. Tell the client, don't walk there. Move the base a bit closer. Put the base in the middle of the, um, of the office. So don't put the base inside the server room in the basement and you're using the phones two floors up. Okay. It needs to be in the premises of where the handsets are. The handsets get signaled to the base via a DEC signal and then from the base to the PABX, it will be IP. Once it's up, we can click on home status. No, that's the base next door. Yeah. Okay. So if you have, for example, uh, multiple bases, not in this case, but if you have multiple bases, it will pick up other bases in the vicinity. Okay. As you can see, it's still going crazy there. If you have repeaters, um, you can have a maximum of three repeaters on a single cell base like this, then you register the repeater to the base. So you'll have base, repeater, repeater, repeater. Um, it will just repeat the signal for you. When you do menu star, IP star, it, uh, sorry, another option is menu. If you guys want to write it down, menu star, server star. So the, the feature is menu star 73784. Two, three, star. Did you guys get that number? <laughs> Menu star seven three seven eight four two three star. Okay. That opens up the service menu of the handset. So it's like a conf uh, uh, admin menu there you have master reset to reset this handset you have a site survey mode so the site survey mode you enable that when you have repeaters on the on the network on on the base so every repeater will have a rpn number so you can see the signal between this handset the base and the three repeaters there Okay, then you know where your signal is coming from. No, the site survey mode will only be for um, installation purposes and troubleshooting. Diagnostic. Yeah. Not for application. No. And then if you go under the same menu, you have status and it will also give you the status menu of the handset as well. The firmware version, uh, the battery and so forth as well. Once the base has been upgraded, you go to home status and you see it's 380 branch 00, 0009. Okay. Now we need to do the firmware on the handset. Very important. We go to firmware update. Sorry, we just wait for the handsets to register first. Mine is saying searching. Dylan, can you just go to extensions for us? Just register them there again. Send in another request uh, on the extension. Yeah. So we're just sending another request to let the <coughs> answers register.
It should re-register uh, automatically. Um, as soon as the base boots up, it will register. Um, that's the preferred way of how it should work. But for some reason, just on the, I think it's something on the PABX that it's just not allowing it. Okay. But if you have a bundle installed in the field, um, if you switch off the handset and you reboot the base and you switch it back on, it will register again. It's nearly immediate that it registers. Okay. Just go to handset for us. Yeah, it's flashing orange because the handsets aren't registered. Oh, did you restart it again? Oh. Okay, just register the handsets again. If you can just register your handset there for us. Just click on the handsets again for us to refresh the tab. Uh, on the, yeah, there. Okay. And then if we, oh, sorry, handset. Okay. So just press menu on your handset for now. Go to connectivity, say deregister. Enter four zeros, it deletes the registration. Tell him if you can just send another register handset request, and we just re-register them again. So you re, sorry, we deleted the registration, just create a new registration, and let's see that it comes up again. Sorry? Yeah. He said with his install he done last week. Um, took about three to say five minutes to re register again. Did you reboot the base as well? No, I'm about to do that now. Yeah, I'm forced to reboot it, yeah. Okay, we just want to do a force reboot. Um, see what happens after this. Yeah, so the difference between a normal reboot and a forced reboot sorry, is if you click on reboot and there's active calls on you, the base will wait for all active calls to be completed, then only it reboots. It, uh, no, it will still allow new calls. Yeah. So it will wait for all calls to be, yeah. Force reboot, I don't care what you do, I'm rebooting. That's what force reboot is. Sorry? Yeah. Um, so when you do your firmware upgrade, it will do the software net and it will wait for all active calls and then it will reboot.
I think everyone here in between all of us here, Eugene is the one that's got like nearly the most between Eugene and Chris, the one with the most sites installed with the ISOs. So The ISERV solution is a, is a very, very great solution for, um, for clients that's mobile inside the office. So give it to the department manager or so because he has to walk around from desk to desk and that. And very good phones. They, you can also connect a earphone jack into here. I've tested it. Um, for example, take your Samsung uh, earphones. It's got that little button on it. You can even answer a call with that button. So connect your earphones in here. When, uh, when the phone rings, press the button, and your speech is there. And I'm not, no, this one doesn't come with a belt clip. They're the bigger ones, yes. No, but the handset must still register. So if we go to extension, handset, we must still get the detail. Anyway, they are there. Sorry, Dallin. Thank you, Chris. Go to extensions again. Dallin? Yeah. Extensions. Go to 21116. <coughs> Sorry, this is the difference between the single cell and the um, multi one. So click on the extension number itself. And now we have to tie it to an extension. I forgot about this part, sorry guys. Now we're going to select what handset. So you can take out the batteries of the handset. There's a little sticker there. that has got the IPEI number. Otherwise, go into the status of the menu and you can have a look. Otherwise, we just choose the first, like one, one, two, two. Yeah. Select it and then we say save. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> Dylan, why didn't you tell me? Okay, who was the one on first? So one of the answers should register shortly, whoever has that extension. Okay, now we can see this 21116 is tied to that number. So now we go to number two. Handset number two tied to extension number 2117. Do that with all three. Then only we can do firmware. Okay. No, the, it's not registered yet. You see the state is blank. Tell him. Yes. There is an external mouse. <laughs> Make it easier. <laughs> so when you get the ISOs in a bundle, all what you're going to do is run, preferably put the base in the center of the office where it's going to be used. Run a, a network cable from the base to the switch, and you give the base station power. Okay. So don't mount it in the middle of the ceiling because not everybody's got plugs like us in the middle of the ceiling. Okay. No, there's no PoE on the base. It's power only. It's got a two-pin adapter for the power. There's only one slot for the RJ45 to go in, so don't plug a RJ11 in there. It's not going to work. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry? For the base, yes. It's got a two-pin adapter. I just need to find where this one is. This one. Yeah. Oh. Sorry? Yeah, wherever the base is going to be installed, 
that is where you will be installing the power. The, the customer won't run a, a power cord for you. Unless the customer is very kind, he'll say, no, it's fine. He'll get his electrician to put a power plug there. You remember, if you have four of these solutions, you're not going to ha have handover between them because it's a single cell solution, yeah. one base. You can't add another base to this one where you have what's your normal iServe installs. Yeah. This is... Sorry? I think the same product as the, the in gigaset. Yeah, I don't know the gigaset, so I can't mm -hmm. comment on that. Did you do the last one now? Just saying registering. Click on handset. Oh, sorry, extensions. Yes. Yeah, the base just has a, we have some latency on it, so we just rebooted it now just to see what it does. So latency meaning when we click somewhere, the web page takes a bit long to refresh. So we're just having a look why, what's happening there. Okay. Yeah. No, no, no. The handsets are already registered. So on the extension, just select them and we start sub okay, Sorry, what are your uh, technology? Re registering. It's saying registering. Yeah. So just on the extensions, do a start sub -reg. Because the handsets are already registered. Otherwise, we, w we wouldn't have had these numbers. So the handsets are registered to the base. It's just the extensions aren't registered the to the PABX. I have no idea. Those are that part is right. Oh, okay. No, but your the answer is yeah. So that's right. Yeah. Come on. So you is two D eight A. They you. So your handset is still here, but the extension. He's saying D registered. Mm -hmm. phone is saying D registered. So, so now I'm going uh, to play registering it now. Under handset, go under. You want to go to get all of these sub registers? No, no, no. Just hold it. Let's do this. We're going to just do it the long way around. Okay. Okay, look, the base has a static IP. Let's just connect directly to the base for now. <coughs> 